Hello, everyone. How are you today? I didn't I didn't hear everyone. How are you today? Great. It's a pleasure to have you joining us here at HASP. If we have not met yet, my name is Ian McNeil. I'm the director of the program. I'm very happy to have you all here for our new member orientation. It's our second one this year. We first met with a large group back in January, but you have all either joined us since January or didn't attend our first session in January. So we're happy to have you here today. Thanks for coming in on a nice summer day and hopefully we'll get you nice and prepared for what's coming up this fall because we just kicked off our new year. So we're happy to have you all joining us. You're going to hear from some of the people that help make HASP work and help make us run every day. Uh, in addition to myself, I have my colleague Amy Weber here is who is here with us and she'll be sharing a few details about the benefits of your membership, but you're also going to hear from a majority of the HASP board. Uh, they are all here to share what they do individually with you and to help you understand a little bit how the program works. Clearly, you've all have been here many times before because no one sat in the front row with the exception of Doug, Judy, and Amy. So you clearly know the unofficial rule here, but no, there is no rule. Every seat is open to anyone, but hopefully you're finding your perfect spot today because this is our exact classroom where most the majority of our courses are held. So hopefully, if you want, move around, find a, a spot that works good for you. Uh, and we hope to give you a lot of information to take home today so that you can either find a committee that you might want to volunteer with. You can find a job within HAS that you might want to learn more about. You can learn about a trip or upcoming event that you want to attend or learn about the courses that we have built for a wonderful fall semester that kicks off in just a few weeks, okay? But the whole point of this is to get to know each other. So the first thing I want to do is have you turn to someone next to you, a neighbor, preferably not your spouse or someone you don't know, and introduce yourself and tell them when you joined HASP and something you've learned recently. Go ahead. Okay, I see a lot of great conversations getting started. I hope you had a chance to meet somebody new. The, the great thing about HASP is that is a, an interaction that you can have every time you come to an event with us, whether it's a special event, uh, getting on a bus together and heading somewhere across state lines, whether you're coming to a course to learn about something that you have a similar interest in, or whether you're coming to a monthly program to learn about something with a large number of past members, there's always a chance to meet someone new and start up a new conversation. So hopefully we've not broken the ice and you can do that anytime you're back within HASP events, okay? I'm curious, did anyone uh, meet anyone who has uh, no affiliation with Hope College whatsoever? Never been here and learned of HASP individually, okay? That's great, I don't either. So it's nice. Thank you for coming. Not everyone here is affiliated with Hope College. It's important to know. Only about 40% of our members overall are alumni of Hope College. So if you ever heard that that was a requirement for this program, you can tell everyone that you've talked to that it's not. 
But the great thing is we do have a number of people that have spent many years contributing to Hope College in many ways, uh, whether that be on the faculty, whether that be on staff or uh, students themselves, or you have kids or grandkids that have been to the college. We have a wonderful relationship with the college that gives us so many things. We're the recipients of this beautiful space that they've allowed us to, to use that has members funded. I wanna make that very clear. This group pulled together funds through donations and were able to renovate this beautiful space that we have now. So please, whenever you see this space, be thankful for your fellow HAS members because they were able to make this happen. And we're gonna learn some more about some of the other benefits that membership brings you and learn more about how the program works a little bit. But I wanna introduce first our president of HAS, the president of our board, John Cobes. It's a very special year for HAS this year. He's gonna tell you a little bit about our history and what this 35th year represents for us, okay? I'm live. Good afternoon, thank you for coming. Uh, you have joined a really wonderful group. Uh, HASP stands for Hope Academy of Senior Professionals. The hope part is because we are part of Hope College. We, we are joined at the hip with Hope College. We are academy, not an association, because an academy is dedicated to learning, which is what we do. We're lifelong learners. Senior, well, look around. <laughs> no kids in this room. And professionals, we're all professional at something. Doesn't mean everybody here is a physician, dentist, lawyer, doctor, engineer, whatever. You're professional at something. You're expert at something. And as a member of HASP, you're joining a community where we want you to share your knowledge, share your experience, share your expertise, Become engaged, not just saying hello to the person next to you. You know, I encourage all of you to attend as many classes as you can. We have a huge variety of classes, which I think Judy will talk about. Uh, we have monthly meetings, which are really, really outstanding. And we have uh, special events, trips. I just got back from Comerica Park on the Detroit Tigers trip. By the way, the Tigers won. It was a miracle. And they didn't call me out of the bullpen or anything. In any case, we are delighted to have you as members of HASP. It's a community. You're going to come away with this, not just with learning experiences, but with friends you never would have met in any other way. You will come to cherish your membership in HASP the way I do. And I think I'm done with my speech again. Thanks, John. I'll take it back from John real quick uh, to give you a few introductory items to how the program works. Uh, so John is the president of our board, which is comprised of HAS members. You'll meet a few more of them here today. But the important thing to remind you is basically what our mission is here at HAS. John mentioned we are a lifelong learning community. So really our only requirement to membership is that you have an interest in learning throughout your entire life. One of our kind of mottos that we've adapted over the last year here is learn for life. Very simply, learn for life. You can learn in this classroom. You can learn volunteering with HASP outside of the classroom. You can learn on a trip to another great location. But the whole point is that you're joining us because you're actively seeking a chance to learn. Maybe you loved the classroom as a kid. Maybe you hated the classroom as a kid. But our classroom is a little bit different. We have a lot more back and forth. Our dialogue is really important in here. And we bring you some of the most expert people in their fields to talk about some a wide array of interesting subjects. So we're here to enrich a few parts of your life. First is intellectual, we talked about that. Second is socially, just to meet new people. We find my generation connects over the phone, right? And that's not very valuable. I'm envious of all of you that are willing to come and meet and make time together and spend time getting to know one another. And that's something that we lost a lot during COVID. If you spent time alone during COVID, or if you were in a small circle of people, you know what I'm talking about. And it's so great to have this classroom full twice a day and committees in and out of that time to see everyone coming back into this space to learn and work together. So your social life, I guarantee you, will improve. You'll make new friends and you'll be able to introduce yourself to people and share your experiences with them at the same time. And then lastly, it's cultural. We're here to teach you some things too, but we wanna take you outside of the Holland area. Maybe you're from Holland and this is a place that you've always known and you grew up and you love, but there's a chance with Haas to learn more about the area outside of Holland. Maybe you've relocated to Holland for the first time in retirement. We wanna learn from you to bring your experiences to this area too. So please continue to share with people throughout today and throughout your entire engagement with HASP because that's how our program continues to grow. We'll never look the same every year. 
So when we started last year, I, by the way, I started in June of last year, so I'm fairly new to this program. And my colleague Amy joined us in September of last year. We feel like we know about 10% of the program by now, okay? But the important part is, is that every year this program starts over with each of you bringing new people, new friends to join us, new experience, new expertise, new courses that are developed. We get to start from scratch every year and that's the great thing. But what continues each year is the community that we develop together. And we're now happy to invite you into that community. So let's get started here. I'll talk about a few things that are important to your membership and how things work and how you can participate in as many things as you possibly can. So there are four major areas that we as an organization like to provide our members. The first, monthly programs, which I'm sure I don't see David here, but we will talk about monthly programs a little bit in his absence. The socialization component I've already talked about, and that kind of permeates everything that we do here at HASP, the social aspect. And hopefully you're all good at that. If not, meet, your, meet someone who is, and they'll introduce you to everyone in the program. Next, special events. We have Alice Doss here who's going to tell us a little bit more about how our trips and the events that we take our learning outside of the classroom for. She'll explain more about that. And then, of course, our courses, which is the bread and butter of what HASP provides, that lifelong learning component we do twice a day, every day uh, throughout the year. So we're happy to introduce you to some of those things. But let's start with the monthly program side, especially because David's not here. I'll explore a little bit more about this uh, and how these work. So we host 11 of these a year. They are monthly, clearly in the title. But what the whole point of this is, is to bring our community together as a large group in one spot, as many of us as we can, to talk about a general topic of interest. Now, we've done everything that you can think of in this group. We've had political leaders come talk to us. We've had organizations come talk to HASP. We just had a member who's working with the next mission to uh, Nixon, excuse me, working with the astronauts on the next mission to the moon, working with NASA. We just had the librarians uh, from uh, Herrick District Library come speak to us about the challenges of book banning and some of the struggles that they're facing in this community and while also providing resources to this community. So you name it, we wanna talk about it. And it's a great chance to get together. These are usually held on the first Tuesday of the month. Uh, now there are some general exceptions, but we host those across the way over at the Jack Miller Auditorium. So we'll show you where that is if you're not familiar with it, but it's a great spot to again, meet new people and get everyone together. We usually have about 150 to 200 people attend those in person. And it's also available to stream online too. If you don't feel like getting up out of bed, and getting up early in the morning, you can still watch from home in your pajamas. So just know that that's always available to you. So let's explain a little bit about the geography of where we are here. If you are familiar with Hope College's campus, you can turn your, your ears off for a second. But if you're not, let's show you about where we participate, okay? So you can see anything in orange on this map is where you are right now. So see that HASP uh, box that looks orange there? That's this classroom that you're sitting in. So we are located on the very north side of campus, we are, our address is 8th Street, so if you're ever walking down the main thoroughfare of downtown Holland, you can find us. Or we have a little sign right there on the door. You can come in from the front or come in through the back, which I think is the most convenient way if you park in our parking lot off of 9th Street, okay? This building is called the Anderson Workman Financial Center, which is a fancy way of saying that there's a bank here. Uh, but this is primarily owned by Hope College. There are classrooms above and below us. So you will see students interacting with us on a regular basis. I think classes start next week. Dr. Hemingway, is that right? Okay, so we'll, we're happy to have students back. It's been kind of a quiet summer. So uh, the nice thing about it is we've had parking available. So once students come back, that'll be more of a challenge, but it's nice to see a bunch of young people enjoying the same space that we do. So you can also see in here your areas that you can park. I know some of you had questions about this earlier today. So the lot directly behind us here, or there is a reserved HASP lot next to the old fire station that is reserved specifically for HASP members. As long as you have that pink and orange HASP sticker that you see hanging there on the screen, as long as you put that on your rear view mirror, you will be all set, okay? That gives you the permission to park in any faculty or staff lot that's labeled with an F on it, okay? If you see an F parking lot, you are able to park there and that can park there anytime. Even if you're coming to Hope College for an event in the evening, or maybe you're coming on a weekend, you can put that half sticker on there and you have a right to park in any of those spaces. Okay, do you have a question, Dwight? Yes. Does that mean they can't park there after one? Good question. So Dwight asked about the parking sign that you might see on the outside of the half parking lot specifically. 
That gives you from the 9 a.m. to 1 p or 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. timeline. That does not mean that you can only park there in those times. What that means is students can start to use that lot after one o'clock, pending there are spaces available. So we share this whole lot with students and faculty. So the nice thing about it is they've reserved that for us during our course times. So basically students cannot park there, but when we have our morning or afternoon sessions, we hope that by one o'clock you're all here in time for class and we get started. If there are any spots left, students and faculty can fill that space in. But what that means is it's available to you at any time. Again, any lot that has an F on it or is labeled designated as HASP is for you at any time, as long as you have that parking sticker on there. Yes, sir, Henry. We will get this to you, yes. We'll get you a copy of this because there are a couple other important parts of this. If you can't find a spot in the Hope lot or it's too busy back here when students arrive, the best thing that we can suggest is to park in the 7th Street parking ramp. Okay, anyone familiar with this? There's a double-decker lot off 7th Street. Now, it might seem far away, but we've timed it. It's a four and a half minute walk. And the best thing about it is it's not part of the snowmelt system. So if you wanna come here in the winter and it's snowing out and you don't wanna leave your car out because you're gonna get a bunch of snow and ice on it, park in the lower part of that ramp, you got covered parking and it's a melted drive walkway all the way from the parking ramp. So that's another great location for you to park. You walk right between uh, the Makatawa Bank and the hotel and you end up right here on the other side of 8th Street and you can walk right in the front door. Really easy to do. I like to do that sometimes even when it's not snowing out because it's a nice walk, okay? Now the other important part uh, and major point that we have is what we're talking about, monthly programs, right? Those are hosted at the Jack H. Miller Center, for Center for Musical Arts. That is on the corner of Columbia and Ninth. So if you were to walk out our back door here and you walk two blocks down, you'd run right into it. Anyone not familiar with where this building is? It's only a couple blocks away, so it's easy to find. It's got beautiful glass uh, atrium in front. You can't miss it. If you get to the DeVos Fieldhouse and you see soccer fields, you've gone too far, okay? But the nice thing about this is, is it's just a quick walk right down the street, so you can always still park in the Hass lot and walk over there for monthly programs, okay? The great thing about monthly programs, though, is we offer a shuttle service. So if you don't want to mess around with parking here and walking, you can park over at the field house, and we'll shuttle you over, make it convenient for you. This is really nice in the winter months, too. So you can park your car. You don't have to worry about parking because it's really usually empty over at the field house during that time. And then you take a board a shuttle, and you take a couple blocks over. Don't have to worry about the congestion at all. So all those things are great as part of the monthly program and plenty more parking on the far east side of campus too. And as Henry suggested, we'll make sure to have copies of these for you if you'd like one at the end of today's presentation. Okay, Dwight, another question. Oh, good question. So Dwight is curious if the shuttle service serves all three of these lots around the field house. The answer is no, the shuttle picks up right here from lot 62. So if you park here or here, you can find your way over here and the shuttle will pick you up. The nice thing about it is lot 62 is huge, probably 200 spots. So you should probably be able to park there. The only reason we highlight 1661 on there is they are visitor lots. So those are open to the public to park too. Okay, so just another option. If you're coming in and wanna get a quick out down 9th Street to get back the other side of town, you can park there. Okay, so continuing talking about monthly programs, we have one coming up. Remember, it's usually the first Tuesday of the month. This one, we're happy to, to announce that we have a part two coming to us. Last year, we had two of these three speakers join us for a wonderful conversation about, the, uh, about how journalism is surviving in a time when it's under attack. We have those same speakers coming back, and you might recognize one of those. Sarah Leach, the editor, uh, chief editor of the Holland Sentinel, will be here to speak with us. This will be a panel discussion moderated by one of our members, Milt Newsma, and will also feature Tom Stites, who is the founder of the Banyan Project, the entire focus of the Banyan Project is to make sure that local areas that don't have newspapers find access to them. And his whole specialty is, is trying to combat how these large newspaper organizations are scooping up the local ones and replacing local news with national news. Okay, so this will be a really interesting uh, event for you to attend. Again, this is over at the Jack Miller Center on September 5th. It's the Tuesday after Labor Day. We don't take any breaks here at Haas. So if you can go out to the beach and enjoy your the final days of summer on Labor Day on Monday, come back to us Tuesday morning. And this is going to be a great event to attend. It's got a great panel and hopefully you can all be there and see more Haas members in a large group. Now the next one that we're really excited to talk about is this. In October, October 10th, this is not the first Tuesday of the month, but the second Tuesday, October 10th, we are honored to welcome Tova Friedman to HASP and to Hope College. She is a survivor of Auschwitz-Birkenau 
uh, concentration camp in the Holocaust. She is now, I believe, 84 years old. She's coming with her daughter, Taya, to speak to us about the multi-generational impact of the Holocaust. She is a published author. Uh, the, the name of her book is The Doubt of Auschwitz, and we're very fortunate to have her come to us to share her story uh, and uh, connect with Haas members, especially at a time when anti-Semitism is at a rise in Ottawa County and other parts of the, of the state and country. So this is a huge honor for us. We want to invite everyone to this program. So please put this on your calendars now, October 10th. You can also bring a guest with you if you'd like. We'd like to fill the Jack Miller Center and invite students and faculty as well to attend this great event. Tova was last year about 10 years ago, but it's our pleasure to welcome her back. So now that you understand monthly program, by the way, there are coffee and cookies at every monthly program. So if those two speakers weren't enough to bring you, hopefully the coffee and cookies will. The next thing I want to talk about are special events. And Alice is going to talk more about these in a second, but I just wanted to give you an overview of what they are. Basically, I said before, it's taking the Hass classroom and jumping on a bus and going somewhere else and kind of doing learning remotely, but with a group in person. Okay, so just to give you some ideas of what these events include, John already talked about our Tigers trip. We just got back from Comerica Park a few a couple weeks ago for a Tiger win, a rare one. Um, but it's good to be back the final year of Miguel Cabrera playing for the Tigers. It was great to see that. So that's just one option. So we have the fun stuff, too. We also have a great event coming up here called Horsing Around Holland. If you ever curious, I know Sharon is, is signed up for this trip already. This is a really cool event that's going to take Haas members to four different horse venues in the area of Holland. One of them is a horse therapy uh, venue. One of them learns about the, the art of dressage and fancy horse riding. Uh, one is about horse maintenance and horse care. Really cool opportunity to explore this area that you might not be so familiar with, even though you live here. Another one, we're going across the border. We're heading up to Canada for a three-day trip to the Shaw Festival in Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario. We have a, a large bus heading up there with a group of Haas members that are going to go up and see three beautiful live performances up at this uh, very prominent uh, live theater festival in Canada. We're also taking a group over to Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, uh, in the late fall to catch the fall colors, taking a trip out on this boat ride through the beautiful Lake Geneva and the touristy sites of that community. And one that has not yet been announced, but I'm going to throw in just because uh, I have a, an in with the people who are planning it is we are doing a Christmas in Killarney event down in Ben Harbor, a live dance performance uh, by Irish dancers around the Christmas time. Uh, so you'll see this uh, coming out as an option to register in the coming weeks. So mark your calendars for this one. This is December 8th. Okay, so I've already talked about monthly programs and special events very briefly, but I want to talk about again, the courses, which is another main component, maybe why you joined HASP in the first place. Maybe you've learned about a great course that one of your friends or neighbors took, and you were curious about what that looks like. I'm going to let Judy talk more about that as the director of, or excuse me, as the chair of our curriculum committee. But I just want to outline some of the things and how you can easily get involved with these courses, because now is the time. First of all, we have three semesters for the year, and I know this is tiny. We'll share this with you as well if you're interested. But the whole point is to tell you that we have three semesters. We follow an academic calendar very similar to what Hope College follows. We have a spring semester. We have a summer semester, which we just wrapped up. And we have a fall semester that kicks off in a couple of weeks. So by the time that you get home, you might have a catalog in your mailbox waiting for you that uh, will list all the courses available now through the end of November and into a couple of days into December. Basically, what we're trying to tell you is that every time we have a new catalog come out, you get a copy of it mailed to you. You then have a registration phase where you can sign up for those classes. And then you have four great months of classes available to you in this classroom specifically. Okay, three times a year that comes around, a couple of breaks. We make sure not to bring you down here during tulip time. We, we want to recognize that you want to keep you sane. We want to keep ourselves sane. So we take a break off right before May. But then we come back in early June. And we run through uh, just the last couple of weeks in the middle of August. And we kick back up again in early September. Okay, so three terms. You'll always be getting a printed catalog in the mail outlining those courses for you. But let's talk about this classroom that you are in, because this is state of the art. I can tell you, I've, I've been to a number of other lifelong learning communities in the area. They have nothing like this space. First thing about it, it's dedicated to us. Okay, meaning that no other people on campus use this space except HASP. So the nice part about it is if you have an interest in using it for something or you want to lead a small group discussion, you want to have a committee meeting, we have this space available to us to use. You can talk about uh, real estate, prime real estate here on 8th Street to have a beautiful space like this. And look at, we have three different cameras in the room, one in the corner here, one backed by Gloria, who is running today's session. Want to give a shout out and thank you to Gloria, 
who is bringing our, our session. We're recording this now, so it's available to others. But the other thing about this is we can do a lot of our classes virtually. So you can sit at home and watch in the comfort of your pajamas and coffee and watch from home if it's convenient for you. But we love to have you here in the classroom, okay? This is a great space to, again, meet people and get this new experience that you might not have had before. We see about 80 people in here. That's an improvement. Our classroom that we used to have, if you're familiar with us or rejoining us, we used to be upstairs in this building. And way, way long ago, we used to be in the basement of this building. But most recently, we're upstairs, and the capacity of that space is only about 45 to 50 seats. Now done here, we can fill this with 80 people. And we've done it many times over the last few semesters that I've been here. And the great thing about us now is no class is ever sold out. If we can't get you in here, we can either do you virtually, or what we can do is we can make room for you. OK, so if you ever see something, the class is full, call the office. We'll do our best to get you in because we don't want to limit anyone's ability to be here. The great thing about this room is it's extremely handicap accessible. It's accessible for people with hearing difficulties and visual difficulties. OK, all these tables can be moved so we can rearrange them if need be. There's enough space to get wheelchairs and walkers in here if we need to. All the chairs are firm and comfortable to sit in. And the best part is everyone looks at two huge screens that allows us to make sure you get all the information that the presenter is sharing with you. OK, and again, if you are using a hearing aid, you can loop right into the loop system that's in this room and you can listen right from your own device. It's another great benefit that we have. So all these microphones allow people at home to hear us and allow you to hear as well in here. OK, uh, I'll move on a little bit just to explain briefly. We have two course times throughout the semester. There's a course in the morning starts at 930. All of our classes are 90 minutes. So this first session runs from 930 to 11. The afternoon session runs from 1 o'clock to 2.30, 90 minutes. So you can take either a one-session class that's just one of those, multi-session classes that are multiple segments of those 90 minutes. The catalog is full of a different variety of those. But those are the only two times that you really need to know for courses, 9.30 and 1. And the next part is these modalities. You'll see these referenced in the course catalog when you get it. A couple different ways that we're bringing courses to you here at HASP. The first, classroom. Most traditional, you're going to come and sit right in here. OK, there's no recording of that class. There's no virtual option. It's just in here. Why would it just be in here if you can do virtual? Well, some of the courses that we have are hands on. Some of them have a number of videos and uh, different multimedia components that just make it easier to hose in here only. So some of those will, you'll see in your catalog. Some of them are small discussion groups. We keep it in person only because we want it to be an open and honest environment to share as we read a book. We share poetry together. We write together. Those are better intimate and in-person only with the classroom. So you might see that designation. You will then see a virtual only designation, which means that the class is only offered through Zoom when you join virtually from home. Now, why would you do this if you have this great space? Well, sometimes we have the benefit now of bringing in presenters from outside of the Holland area. Sometimes we have presenters joining us from outside of the state. This is a convenient way for them to join us and share their expertise with us without them having to commute here to Holland or travel here from Holland from a long distance. So that's another option for virtual only classes. You'll see some of those in your catalog too. Majority of our classes that we have though are hybrid, which means we're in here and we're also casting through Zoom virtually. So our hope is to provide as many of those as possible so you can have the convenience of sitting at home or being here in the classroom with your fellow HASP members. And lastly, you'll see a couple of the classes on your catalog this fall that are offsite, meaning the class is best suited being away from this classroom altogether. For example, we have a couple of tours heading down to Saugatuck to give you a history of architecture and the politics of Saugatuck. So they'll be meeting down in Saugatuck and walking through the city together. We just had a class at Meyer Garden about uh, a tour through Meyer Garden's gardens, their, art, their sculpture park, and other great pieces of that wonderful venue. And the, we took a bus and met over there, OK? So there are offsite courses as well outside of this classroom. So those are options that are available to you for the fall as well. So important things to remember here is if you see a class that's hybrid in your catalog, that means you can come in person, you can sign up to come in person, or you can sign up to watch from home. Both are available, okay? So if you are curious, whatever's in classroom is anything that has the classroom designation or the hybrid designation. That means it's hosted right in here and you can come and join us anytime. Okay, yes, I'm sorry, Beverly. Thank you. Beverly made the comment that if you sign up for one of those modalities at the first time that you think you can attend, let's say you look at your calendar, it's kind of hard to book out four months in advance, but you think, oh, I'll do I'll do that one in person. And then you think, oh, I actually have to schedule a doctor's appointment at the end of that time. I might not have enough time to get to my doctor's appointment from the HASP classroom. That's okay. Give us a call. You can always switch to virtual. 
And if you're signed up virtually and you want to come in person, again, just give us a call and we'll see if we can make room for you. That's the great thing about us. And we have rolling registration, meaning you don't have to sign up the day that the catalog comes out and the day that ca that registration opens. If you don't know your schedule in November, that's okay. Hold off until November and sign up then. Maybe you have a free day after someone cancels lunch on you and you want to come to a class in the afternoon. Sure, check what's available that day and come on over. We're happy to have you. We'll never tune your way. Now, this is another big thing I want to point out that is a sense of confusion a little bit because we're now so digital here at HASP that sometimes we've added multiple elements to our digital presence. So there's an important distinction between YouTube and Zoom. Everyone familiar with those two platforms? Okay, well, we use both, but we want to show you that we have different uses for either. So first, our YouTube page is where you can go to stream those monthly programs live. So remember those big, those big events that we talked about over at the Jack Miller Center that happen once a month? Those are live streamcast to you at home if you want. You can stream those right from YouTube, and the link is always provided to you in Hask Communications. You can also find there any recorded courses or previous recordings of monthly programs all on that webpage. Okay, so you can go back and look at all courses that we recorded for the last six or seven years are up on that, pad, that platform for you to see. It's a great way to tell your friends about Hask too, because you can send them, it's a public link. They can go and see anything that's on there and they can see what you've been doing and what you've been up to in the Hask classroom. The great thing about that is that it's public and that at the end of each semester, we put all the videos from the previous semester up on that page for you to see. So in case you missed something and you wanted to attend that class, but you couldn't make it work with your schedule, don't worry if it was recorded, we'll have it up there for you to watch at the end of the term, okay? Now Zoom is where we actually do the live courses. So if you're attending a course virtually, and you've signed up to attend virtually, you're going to have a specialized link through Zoom. And that will come to you in each week. We have to make sure it's very clear to which one's coming to you and how to get access to that web page. But that's a different one. You're going to look for this blue box here that says Has Virtual Classroom on our website. And that's how you get to that Zoom classroom for all the live courses that we host. Okay? Any questions on the difference between those two platforms? I know it can be complex, but the nice part is each of them gives us different uh, advantages that we like to keep both. Okay, I'm getting to the end of my spiel here and I'll pass off to Amy in just a second. But again, I've been talking about this catalog. If you haven't seen one yet, it looks like this. It comes out again, three times a year. This was just mailed to everyone that's in this room on Monday. So if you don't get it by the time you get home today, it should be in your, in your mailbox tomorrow. This will have a list of all the courses and the calendar for the entire semester, as well as descriptions of each course and biographies of each of the presenters. The last page has a summary for you as a, little, as a little worksheet and instructions for how to register. Registration opens next Wednesday on the 30th of August at 9 a.m. So if you're like me, you probably will have your whole catalog read through and reviewed. You're ready to sign up for classes right at 9 o'clock. But don't worry, everyone can sign up at the same time. And we have no issues with it. You can do it all electronically. And here's what it looks like to register. It's a really simple page. We send this link out to everyone well before so you can see this and access it, get comfortable with it. You go right here and put your name and your email in, and then all the classes will appear for you as options to select. It's that simple. At the end, you can put your credit card in and pay right there, or you can opt to send us a check or cash when you arrive the next time in the Hass classroom. It's really that easy. And this is how all of our special events are also operated. And any kind of other event like today, you registered through a platform that probably looked very similar to this for this event. Yes, please. Good question. Eileen asks us, what's the cost of the classes? In your catalog, each class will have a price specifically for it. The general rule is that each class is $5 a piece. Okay, so that 90 minutes equals $5. Some classes, like I mentioned, run multi-week, so they're multiple sessions. It's $5 for each of those sessions. Okay, now that's just the default, Eileen. Some classes have a little bit more cost if there's materials involved, if there is a special trip that's going somewhere. It's nice that we built that right into your, to your cost of your class when you register, so we don't have to come chasing you for money later down the road. Okay, so I would say most are anywhere from $5 to $25 at the maximum, depending on what they're doing and how long they are. Now, I wanted to point these things out to you because our most efficient way to communicate with you right now is digitally. If that's something that you're not very familiar with or not comfortable with, we will work with you. But we want to make sure that we're getting you the most up-to-date information as soon as possible so that you can be as active participant in HASP as you can. So first, you see this thing up here, this yellow thing. We have a couple copies on our uh, desk up at the front if you want to grab one on your way out. This is our quarterly newsletter. We have uh, each of the members of the board that are going to be talking today submit a report for their various pieces of the HASP program. And it's a way for you to see what's going on or what might be coming up in the future in that quarter of HASP. 
The summer one is a great thing to look and read through because it's an end of year report. You can see how we ended up the year, some highlights from the last year, and see what might be coming up forward for this new year. So that comes out once a month, and then it's available digitally, or if you need it printed, we can send it to you that way as well. You already talked about the catalog. We already talked about the website a little bit, and I'm gonna let my colleague Amy Weber talk a little bit more about that in just a second. But the big thing I wanna highlight here as the last piece of my conversation with you today is this. Now, this is a cutout of the HASP happenings email. Raise your hand if you've received one of these already. Okay, raise your hand if you have not received one yet. Or, or talk to your wife and find out if you have. <laughs> This is the this is the best way to stay connected with HASP every week, okay? This message goes out every Sunday morning, and I know Terry's shaking her head because Terry, Terry sometimes will print it and put it on her on her refrigerator, or she'll save it and pin it at the top of her inbox all week because it's really that useful to you as a member of HASP. First of all, there's always a great highlight story to kick off the week, maybe a really important event that's upcoming, or something that you need to know as a member to be involved more. Then we always put in a, a calendar of events for that week. You can see courses, you can see other uh, programs or events that are happening, trips, everything's on there as a great reminder for you for the week. If you're like me and you kind of go day by day, this is a great way to stay in touch and keep things regulated here. Anything that's in green here is a hybrid class. So it's color coordinated to help you figure out exactly what you're looking for and what you're doing. It's another great way to verify what you signed up for and make sure that you're attending all those courses that you, that you already paid and signed up for. There's also always links here to the virtual classroom. So if you ever have any trouble to find out where you need to go for what, links are all here. Registration links, course enrollment links, everything comes right through this, this same platform. Plus, I'd love to take a lot of pictures throughout the week and you can see what HASP members have been up to. It's a great way to stay connected for those events that you might have missed. Okay? And I'm sure those of you that get that message can tell you how valuable it is uh, as you're planning out your week or as you're planning your future weeks uh, with HASP events. Okay, I've talked enough. Thank you for your patience as we talk through some of those major details about how the program works and how you can participate. I'm going to pass things off to my colleague, Amy, and she's going to talk to you more about some of the benefits of HASP and the new website that she's working on with a great team. Thanks, Ian. Um, and I just want to emphasize for about the 15th time, because it's the question we get the most, that HASP virtual classroom, whether you click on it from the web page or you click on that yellow box on your HASP happenings that says click here for the virtual classroom, we only have one classroom. So if you sign up for four virtual classes, there's no four links. It's one classroom. All of our virtual classes happen in one classroom. We never schedule more than one virtual um, or hybrid class at the same time. So it's only one link. So if you save it on your internet browser or you have your house happenings, that's where you're gonna get it from, okay? All right, um, so the office and project manager, can we go, perfect, <laughs> he knows, he can read my mind already, see? <laughs> um, so first of all, I wanna talk a little bit about our webpage. So this is currently in the process of being redesigned. So I know you all got very addicted to our website and you love it so much, but sorry, we're changing it. <laughs> um, we're redesigning it. And that's being led by our communications committee um, and Ralph Fairbanks will be talking about communications here in a little while, but just to let you know, um, this current website will be redesigned so the links will be easier to find. But at the moment, it is a, it is the place where you can find A, our virtual classroom. You can see it right down here at the at the bottom, vir virtual HASP. Um, it's also where you can find information about member resources. One big thing we get questions about, this is where you'll find the membership directory. We will be updating our directory at the end of the renewal registration process here at the end of summer, and we'll be sending out information on how to access that directory. You'll be accessing it from the member resources page on the website. Um, when we go through the whole redesign and launch the new the new website, we'll be sending you more information about that. We are hopeful that that will happen before December. So hopefully you'll see a new redesign page um, right into the new year. Okay, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some of the other benefits you get from being a HASP member besides just going to the classrooms and um, going to the special events and the great monthly programs. So first of all, you get a library card for the van and now I'm known around the office as the person who mispronounces everything. So Amy mispronounces everything Weber. Um, so this is the van, I don't know, Wylin, Wheelin, Wylin, Wylin. I'll mispronounce it at another later date. <laughs> the Van Wylen Library. 
um, which is across the street. If you're not familiar, we ha do have HASP maps in the front desk. You can go over there and with your HASP ID, and for those of you who I haven't printed the color ones yet, we do share a color printer with every office in this building. So my apologies, they're not ready yet. But when you get the colored badges that many of you have, the ones that have orange and blue, all you do is walk over to the library with that and they will give you a library card. And that allows you to access any of the, um, the resources that are available at the library. You get the parking, Ian mentioned that, right? Remember, good for any faculty, staff lot, and any visitor lot at any time of the year. You're coming Christmas shopping. You're here for tulip time. You're coming at night. You can use your parking pass. Just make sure it's hanging in your um, car. And no, you do not need to fill out anything in that white section. You don't need to sign it or have it stamped. You just put it in your car. Also, when if you sign up for a special event, where you're going to be overnight, we will provide you information on overnight parking. So you'll be parking in that DeVos lot overnight. There's a special place that so you have security with your car overnight when you park as well. Okay, the YouTube page, Ian mentioned that. This is where we have all the recordings of past classes and past monthly programs. There is a caveat with that. We do have periodically some classes we're not allowed to record. Um, it may be that the research that being presented is too new. Um, and so the presenter, um, usually an academic pr presenter, doesn't want that out yet until the data has been validated or the peer review process is done. So sometimes we have that. A lot of the time we have, and this is particularly important for the classes involving music, um, we have a lot of copyrighted material that's being presented to you. And YouTube has a lot of filters with that. So not every class that is hybrid or virtual will get recorded, but about 95% of them will. Okay. Now we post all those classes at the end of the semester. So I zip them up at the end of the semester, post them out. So you can right now go and see all of the summer ones that were done. However, if for some reason you're in a class like a, you know, a four part class and it's a hybrid class and you miss number two, you get the flu and you went to the first class, you're missing the second class, you really want to get cut up from the third class, give me a call. I can send you a private link during the semester so you can see the second class before you come to the third class. So we can make that accommodation. We just won't post it publicly until the end of the semester. Um, all right. And then one thing that uh, our members don't uh, often take advantage of, but it's there for you. You get discounted dining at Hope's Cafeterias. Um, I would not suggest you do this in the summer. <laughs> they have a very limited menu and you have to contend with everybody who's here for a summer camp. So it's a lot of tater tots and chicken nuggets. <laughs> um, but, but during the fall and the winter, it's actually a really good deal. And this is for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Now, I called the office this morning to get the rates, and I was told that the rates are changing. Um, so we will put something in the HASP happenings with the new rates once they're announced. But we're talking anywhere from 5 to $8. Okay, that's what we're talking about. And for dinner in particular, that is such a deal. They have a full salad bar. They have multiple options. Um, for entrees. So really great deals for you. It's also great if you're taking a morning and an afternoon class, go over across the street um, to the mass cafeteria, grab yourself lunch, and then come on back. So that's available for you as well. All right. So guests, you are always allowed to bring a guest to the monthly program. Um, so if you ever have anybody that might be interested in joining HASP or that you want to introduce to HASP, or if they you just know somebody in your life that needs a free cookie and some coffee <laughs> for an hour and a half, um, bring them over to any of the monthly programs. We love guests. There's always going to be a table. Doug will talk about it, who's um, chair of our month, our membership committee. We'll talk a little bit about it, but we always have a booth for individuals who come in with guests. And many of you probably found us this way too. You sign your guests in at the, at the uh, table and then they can attend the monthly program. At this time, the board is reviewing the process for guests at any other time. So right now the policy, no guests in the classroom. So we don't have, you cannot bring guests to classes, but you can to monthly programs. Now in regards to special events, special events are only for the members up until if, if we, the, the event does not fill up, 
Um, and this doesn't happen often, but if the event does not fill up, the special events committee can allow it to be open up to family and friends. So um, you'll get a special announcement if that ever happens with any of the special events. And every once in a while, a special event is designed to be open for more. We did that with the Detroit Tigers. We opened it up so people could sign up their grandkids. Nobody did that, but, um, <laughs> but it was available to you from the beginning. All right, and lastly, I want to talk a little bit about volunteers. So you'll see ad hoc volunteer opportunities. Those will be announced in the HASP happenings, but there's two standing volunteer opportunities for you if you're interested in doing more with HASP. The first one is front desk worker. Um, we know that you've come here to, to interact with people that are um, also members of HASP. <laughs> so we like having the front desk staff by HASP members. We have uh, during the semester, we have shifts available from nine until 11, 11 to one, or one until three. And if a two hour commitment's too much for you, and you just want to do an hour, just let us know. We'll figure something out. Um, these are individuals who help us with basic administrative tasks, but mainly you're just answering the phones and answering any questions from members that come in. Um, a lot of times these are related to the library, which Terry will be telling us about in a little while. Um, so just basic administration things. The second big volunteer opportunity we have is course technician. And that's what Gloria is doing back there. Um, the course technicians are the members that sit in the classroom during the hybrid or the virtual classes, and they run the Zoom portion. So they make sure that it's getting recorded. They make sure they pick which camera is getting used. So they're kind of like a director. Um, they make sure the volumes are working. And if and members have any questions in the chat, they read them out loud um, during the event. This might sound intimidating, but it's not. Um, Gloria is our most senior technician. She's done a wonderful job this past year making a step-by-step -step sheet. She's trained some individuals already. Here's the great part about being a course technician. Not only do you get to be a director and you get to run the show <laughs> on Zoom, you also get to take the class for free. So we don't make you pay for the class that you're going to be the technician for. <laughs> so that's also a good part of that opportunity. Don't be intimidated by the technology. You'll shadow a senior member for a while, um, but we have that open and that's for any hybrid or virtual class that we have available. And there's sign-up sheets for that as well. So if you're interested in learning more, just let us know. All right, well, with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Doug, who's gonna talk about membership. Thank you, Amy. Well, just about everything I have here to tell you has been covered or will be covered by subsequent speakers. So I'm gonna to try to keep this brief. The duties of the membership committee are pretty straightforward. And frankly, I think uh, our committee is probably the least cerebral aspect of the HASP program. And I think that's why they made me the chairman of it actually. But what we do is important and we're good at it. And each one of you here has dealt with the membership committee or you wouldn't be here. And we are delighted that you're here. Great to have you and once more, welcome to HASP. The, principal duty of our committee is to promote and assist membership. Very simple. And we've developed a term called the onboarding process recently in, in our meetings. And this in general relates just from the time you think about or pick up an application form through the joining process and perhaps by the six month mark when we touch base with you again and ask you how things are going, uh, what's good, what's bad, suggestions, and so forth. But um, membership in HASP over the years has been done by members inviting friends, relatives, as uh, their guest at a monthly program meeting. More and more lately, though, people just hear about HASP in the community and just want to come, which we think is great. So uh, whatever the means is, these folks go to a monthly meeting as guests. Uh, they fill out the application, uh, uh, do, complete the application process, and then they're uh, welcomed and accepted at a monthly meeting subsequent to that. The next thing our committee does is sort of an assimilation process. And here we want to educate our new members as to what HASP can do for them, what's available, and how can we optimize the HASP experience for them. Um, mentoring is important and we're revising that now as well. 
but um, the, the um, mentors usually and always have been often the person who invites a one to come, but when they don't, we're setting up a, a subcommittee to try to uh, have a more a mentoring subcommittee, a, a better process, so we can cover that well. The monthly program is important for our committee. We try to be there to greet you at the door. As Amy was saying, we have a welcome table. There's one of our members who will greet and register guests. Another member will uh, uh, talk to new members who are coming in that day and go over details with them. Um, several of us are circulating around answering any kind of questions that come up, such important issues as where the restrooms are, uh, how much sugar is in the cookies, and that sort of thing. We're also charged with a duty of reminding you not to take food or beverage into the auditorium because Hope College doesn't like that. We're responsible for new member orientation, and I don't have to tell you about that because you're sitting in one right now. Um, the database of HASP is very important. It's been improved a lot in the last few years. Uh, Ian and Amy have done a great job with that. But, you know, we're a big group of complicated, very interesting people with a lot of uh, special uh, interests, special abilities. And it's great to have that information available when we set up programs to help our members and also to give our members a chance to volunteer and help us within the program, within HOPE, within the community. Retention is important. Unfortunately, each year we lose some members. Uh, uh, people move away, life circumstances change, and uh, sadly, some folks pass away. We, rec we recognize members who have passed away at our annual meeting. That candle is written, uh, lit for each of them. So anyway, to sum up, HASP is a great, great program. If you get involved in all that HASP offers you, you're going to find this is a real bargain. And if you're new to Holland, I mean, this is a great way to really get to know Holland, get to know what's available here, uh, to meet a lot of really neat new friends, new people, and to uh, just, just have a great time. So anyway, thank you for listening. Uh, any questions about... Uh, uh, membership. Thank you. I don't know who's next. Thanks, Doug. Just want to thank Doug and his team for putting together today's event. Uh, Patty Brink, where, where did she go? Patty, just want to recognize Patty. She organized today's new member orientation. So thank you for, for all your efforts, Patty. We have a couple other membership uh, committee members here. We have Kathy Torrey in the back and Beverly Van Gendron over here. So if you're interested in joining or being part of the membership program, please see one of those individuals before the end of the day today. Now, our next group is uh, Judy Parle. Pass this off to her. Again, be it thinking as these uh, committee chairs come up and talk to you about their prospective committees, if it might be something that you might be interested in joining. And they'll all be here at the end of today's program to talk more. I've already learned a lot today. I'm so glad to learn about discount downing, dining. Um, I have no more cheese sandwiches out of a brown bag when I come here for lunch. <laughs> Thanks. I, I hadn't known about that before. That's a great find. Um, I'd like to consider that curriculum is the, the heart of HASP. HASP, when it was started, it was begun by a former re retired English professor at Hope College. His interest was Mark Twain. And when he retired, he quickly realized that he missed his academic interests and he wanted somehow to be able to still do research in Mark Twain and, and share that knowledge with other people. And so he invited some other retired professors to join him at meetings. And uh, after a while, some of the wives said, we'd kind of like to go to those meetings too. Could we be a part of that? And that small beginning more than 25 years ago, uh, is is now what? How many members do we have right now? Approximately seven hundred some. It's it's just grown by leaps and bounds. And so uh, um, I came to Holland with my husband in two thousand three, and my husband's from the south. And I thought, is he going to fit in with Holland? And I and um, he did fit in especially when he realized that there was an organization called HASP because we have many people from many different parts of the world actually are members here. It's not just Hope College grads that stick around. 
when we received from friends of ours who are HASS members a copy of the fall curriculum for 2025, 20, yeah, 2005, we realized we definitely need to join this organization. It was the course listing that really sold us on this organization. And I think you'll find that is true as well. And you'll get yours for fall coming into a day or two in your mailboxes. So the next thing for you to do probably is to go through that and register for courses that you want to take. Take uh, And as we got this new rolling system, you don't have to have that all in your mind the very first time you look at that catalog. You can register for a few in September and then later on, oh, we'll do it again. And, and you, each time you do a registration, you pay for what you've registered for in that session. It's really more flexible. It's a wonderful operation. And it's been a pleasure for me over the past few, few years to see how much... Um, more automated we are in, as an organization. Uh, and it's been wonderful. Uh, it, it did take some learning things. I had to learn Zoom just like all of the rest of you did. It wasn't easy at first, but they made it very helpful. They were helpful to us, the staff, and made it very easy. And I really appreciate the weekly HASP happenings. That's a wonderful way to get the latest and, and prepare each week. Each Sunday morning is part of my ritual now. I open up my ma mail and, and read the HASP happenings for the week. So I encourage you, how many have already taken HASP courses? I would say about a fourth of you. Wonderful. You've, got, you've jumped in already with some getting your feet wet. Once you're in a course, you might realize that, wow, this is fascinating. I might want to teach a course. If you are interested in teaching a course, see me or talk to Amy or Ian to find out what area you might want to make a proposal for. All courses develop from proposals, and proposals are developed within subcommittees. We have four subcommittees, and I'll have to read their areas because they changed recently. There are four areas, fine arts, humanities, science, medicine, technology, it's one, and social sciences. Now, the fine arts consist of the visual arts, performing arts, film, television, and visual media, dance, music, theater, architecture, horticulture, and landscape design. When we were thinking about offering courses of going to gardens and learning about landscaping, that sort of thing, some people thought, was this academic enough? Uh, but we're finding out that we are changing our borders to include more things. And now we're introducing classes on sports. We're not sure where that's going to exactly land yet, but I think for the time being, sports is is in the, um, the committee that's uh, science and medicine technology. But if you have an idea for a course, it may be something that you're not really sure what boundary, what course area it should go in. Uh, you can talk to, to Ian or Amy or myself and find out, get some idea about where you can go with your idea. Uh, moving then from fine arts to humanities. Humanities includes poetry, creative writing, literature, world languages, world cultures, philosophy, and religion. And the science, medicine, and technology includes biology, chemistry, physics, environmental sciences, health and medicine, mathematics, computer technology, artificial intelligence, transportation, geography, and sports. And then finally, social sciences, anthropology, uh, business, economics, education, history, law, justice, um, political science, psychology, and sociology. So um, it's a wide variety. And when you get that catalog, you'll, you'll find that there are many different courses and areas. And, and I, I challenge you to uh, extend your interest. Maybe you maybe you uh, had a profession in, in business, but you might be interested in some of the arts and vice versa. It's a way to just dip your toes in various courses and extend your knowledge, make new friends, and uh, have a good time uh, and make, yeah, wonderful. Any questions about curriculum? Okay. Then turn it to Ian, who will introduce our next person. I'm Maura Reynolds, and I'm a former chair filling in for Beverly Rano, who is the current service department chair. Um, service has always been a part of HAS involvement, and many of us are involved in service in a variety of ways in our community, and HAS just provides one more avenue. You'll see some physical things about service, the little bulletin board out there that has the happy smiley face on it. 
um, right out there has some brochures from a variety of agencies and areas in this general area that are looking for volunteers. So that's certainly one. A second one is we have a special connection with Hope College, as you've already heard, and with Hope College classes. And periodically in the HASP happening, you'll see information about professors at Hope needing HASP volunteers. In fact, next week, you'll see a couple of them um, we have classes at Hope called First Year Seminars intended for new to college students. And they're taught on a variety of subjects. And one of them is involved with hobbies and developing a full life through hobbies. Um, they're looking for 20 HASP members who can sit down and talk one-on-one -on -one with the student about their hobby, how they got into it, how it enriched their lives. The result will be the student will develop a paper um, about that person's hobby and do some serious thinking about it. Um, so those are typically one-off situations. So if you volunteer for that, you'll meet with a student one time. Um, sometimes they're a little bit more than that. For example, there's one coming up that's looking for retired elementary school teachers. And that first year seminar is working with someone who has a background in design and they're looking at the design of classroom buildings and they'd like to have some retired elementary school teachers come in and talk to the students about some designs about what makes sense and what to look for. The idea is that design is an important part of all of our lives and this helps students with some one-on-one -on -one information. So you can look easily, um, the bulletin board out there gives you some ideas um, and keep watching in the HASP happenings for lots of other ones. So thank you. I'll pass it on. Thank you, Maura. You're welcome. Passings off to Mr. Ralph Fairbanks to talk to us about our communications committee and their number of projects that they have going on right now. Thank you, Ian, and welcome, everybody. Uh, communication, what do we do? Our primary function is to make sure that we get the word out to you. Okay, what are the classes? What are the special events coming up? And how can we get that word out uh, effectively and efficiently? Up until, uh, what, a year and a half ago, I think uh, the only way you learned about it was from the monthly newsletter. Well, the communication committee got together and said, we need to do better. The last thing we want to hear from our members is that, well, I didn't know about that class or I didn't know about that special event. So we came up with a vision of the HASP happenings, and it was Ian and, and Amy, I believe, uh, worked together on that to uh, bring it out on a weekly basis. So now members uh, see early Monday morning, and I understand that Ian gets up at 4 o'clock in the morning on Sunday morning and puts that together. No, I think he's more efficient than that. <laughs> So that's, uh, that's one thing that we did uh, from the communications uh, aspect. Uh, the next one is the HASP review. And this comes out on an annual basis. It's uh, available at the monthly meeting in June. And this is where it's your opportunity to uh, contribute uh, to the review, either through uh, short stories, poems, uh, artwork, photography, things of that nature. And uh, this last one, which was uh, for 2023, uh, is I understand was the largest one. So over 160 pages and there's uh, 90 uh, articles or artwork or photos or things like that. So it's really uh, gaining momentum. And I know that every one of you has a, an interesting story to tell. Every one of you, if I sat down with you and said, eh, tell me about your life. What have you done? What's interesting? Everybody has a story to tell. So I'm the guy that you submit it to. And what I'm going to do when I'm done, I'm going to hand out my business card so it's real easy to communicate with me. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, that's the HASP review. And we're kicking off the 2024 vis uh, version of it right now. Okay, Amy talked about the uh, web page and in our site. Um, it's in the process of being updated. 
and and we're working with the Office of Possibility at Hope. What a name! What a great name for that. So, how are we going to design a web page that is inviting and where you can go to it easily and navigate around through it? Okay, so that's that's the next. Uh, project that we're working on starting this week, as a matter of fact. Finally, we have uh, special interest groups at HASP, and uh, the one that I was involved in putting together is uh, photography. If you have any interest in knowing what are all those buttons on the camera for, uh, what's, what's the ISO, what's the aperture, what's shutter speed, how do I compose a picture? And you know what? It doesn't have to be a fancy camera. It can be your phone because um, the camera doesn't make necessarily make the good picture. It's your concept, your idea. How, how do you want to uh, have people move into your picture? Okay, a lot of picture, a lot of people like to do selfies. I was there. I like to make a picture that says, I wish I were there. Okay, so if you have an interest in learning more about photography, again, you can communicate with me and we'll get you involved in it. And that's it. Thanks, Ralph. It's actually 3 a.m. I get up on Sundays to get that out. Ralph mentioned uh, special interest groups. We have a few others in addition to the Haas photographers. We have the Haas gardeners that actually have a full slate of events this summer and remaining through the fall. We have the HASP hikers. Uh, if you enjoy getting out and hiking in local spots around the area, you can join the HASP hikers. We also have the HASP librarians, which Terry will talk about in a moment, that are a group of people that get together and uh, help uh, build the beautiful library that you see out in our lobby space. Uh, so there's lots of different ideas for you to, to work with and as far as joining a small group like that. There's even a rumor of one about uh, HASP environmental policy that it's going to be starting here shortly. HASP uh, sustainability people, HASP recyclers. Uh, so that's still in the early stages. If you're interested in any of those or starting your own, let us know. I'm going to pass things off then to Alice Doss, uh, who will talk a few more or talk a bit more about those special events that we mentioned earlier and some of the great things that her committee has been up to over the last year. Well, I don't know, Ian. I think you stole all my thunder, but <laughs> <laughs> telling everybody about what we did and what we're going to do. But we have a team that uh, likes to plan events and we do daytime only events, but we also do some overnight events. And of course, uh, it's interesting to see if we hit it right, I'll get a call the morning it is out on the internet and someone will say, I think the system's down. And it probably means it's sold out <laughs> because I can't register. But that's when we know we hit a really good idea. And that happened last winter. We did a dinner at the uh, Grand Rapids Community College's dining area. They have a, a, a courses in learning to be a chef. And then after having a wonderful lunch there, we went to the Fred, the Meyer May house to enjoy that with docents. And that was the one I got three calls that morning. I can't register what's going on. Eh, it's full. <laughs> But like I say, we try to do daytime trips and also overnight trips. And uh, we're lucky to have access to Hope College's buses and their drivers that are what we use to get us where we're going. Uh, we do not do out, of, well, I say that, we don't <laughs> do out of the country trips except for the Niagara and the <laughs> Lake one which uh, Canada is not quite that far away and we can manage that pretty well. But, uh, you know, it's a variety of things and the ideas come from you and are given to the committee or they come from the committee who's maybe been somewhere and said, oh, this would be a great thing. Let's try this. So we try to keep them reasonably priced. Um, and what helps a lot is having the bus system from Hope because they have buses and drivers available. We don't have to do that commercially. Uh, sometimes you'll see that it's their box lunches and sometimes those are from Hope, but they give us a good deal also. But uh, we tend to be pretty competitive in how we offer it. And usually uh, you'll see these ads go out fairly early because if it need, if there's a need for tickets, for instance, we have to get on the list pretty early to hold those tickets and then have to decide how many 
we're going to use. So you'll see them, you'll tell you far out there, save this date, because uh, we will have to know how many people and then turn the tickets back in if we don't use them all. So it, it's an interesting team to be on. And uh, it does, uh, it challenges us sometimes. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's just hard to get information back when you're trying to learn about a place to go. And I think, for example, we did one this past year with the architectural class of the architectural of Detroit. And it was our first time that we decided to, after the class, then do a trip to Detroit. And it was an overnight trip. And uh, what's interesting is when you try to line things up and you're working on it in the winter, some of those places don't really staff during the winter and trying to get someone to come back and tell you how can we look at such and such a thing you know we just don't get it back till the last minute so sometimes you're scrambling but that was a trip the first for us it was an overnight um and I, all i got was good reviews from it i didn't get to go but a lot of people did and it was also a sellout overnight on that one but I think also we mentioned horsing around. That might already be a sellout. It is. Okay. Well, we will have that Christmas one coming up. So, And we're trying to do some others in the area. Sometimes we do them with Hope's uh, teams. If they have an outstanding team, we'll have uh, a box dinner and then have the, the coach come in and talk, us about, talk to us about what to look for when they're going to be playing the game and then go to the game together. So that's just, you know, an evening kind of thing, but it's fun to little know the background that you wouldn't have if you just went on your own. Uh, we often do trips to the Grand Rapids area because we realize that parking there is not always fun. <laughs> and again, uh, you can just be dropped off to wherever we're gonna be and taken back and we park again in a Hope parking lot. It's always the same Hope parking lots that are over by the DeVos. Uh, field house. So, uh, so again, if you have ideas, let us know. Thanks, Alice. So the important thing to remember there is if you uh, enjoy planning trips, uh, or you were a previous travel uh, agent in, in a past life, then you want to join the special events committee. If you like other people doing all that work, but you like going on the trip, you are going to be someone who signs up for one of those events that the special events committee puts together. So thank you, uh, Alice, for, for sharing that with us. As I mentioned, David is not here to talk to us about the program, but I tried to cover as much as I could there. If you have any interest in being part of the group that puts together these great uh, monthly events for us, or if you're interested in working with the Special Events Committee, joining the Membership Committee, helping uh, serve on the Service Committee, or even presenting or, or organizing classes for us, speak to any of those presenters that have spoken already. And the last person I want to share with you is Terry Holden. We'll talk a little bit about uh, our special interest group that puts together the beautiful displays out in our library. Well, first of all, I want to say a special thanks to the Special Events Committee. It brings back memories. Many years ago, we went to Lexington, Kentucky, the site of the Kentucky Derby. Never did I think as a HASP member that I would learn how to bet on a racing horse. And the committee sent the representatives to our hotel and we had our own private tutoring session on how to read a race sheet and bet on a horse. And it made the next day's event very, very fun and interesting because we knew what we were talking about. I don't think anyone won any money, but anyway, it was a really good trip. So lifelong learning at, at HASP is certainly true. Uh, I'm a nurse by profession, so little did I think that I would be Miss Marion, the librarian. But when we uh, um, moved from our facility upstairs, we uh, uh, committee, there were three of us, Barb Stedgig and Barb Wright, myself, and Linda Seusser, actually four, who brought all these books down. These are all contributions from HASP members over the years and we have a very nice uh, collection um, we have a sign out book so when we're out in the lobby i can just show you just uh, sign on a book we don't have a length of time how long you can have the book out and uh, just bring it back to us good uh, we do encourage uh, contributions although i will ask people uh, to talk to me first if you're considering maybe perhaps giving a collection we have limited space and so we have to kind of think and uh, you know sometimes the topic we got some beautiful books for instance on art and from one of our members and their coffee table books they're beautiful 
but they didn't sign out very well. And so um, with permission from the donator, we had a little uh, HASP uh, take a free book. And from for the whole college, people walking in, HASP members, it was great. And we were able to give all those beautiful books away uh, to people. And so that was a really nice uh, gesture. We have fiction and nonfiction. We also have a big collection of DVDs. You can see them out there on the shelf. And then there's some... Um, in the um, in the drawers of the So about twice a year, we go through the books and just kind of purge some that are probably getting old. We kind of don't like um, little paperbacks with tiny, tiny prints, kind of hard on your eyes, you know. So those things we, we maybe, you know, discourage. But we get some really nice books, a favorite book you like, and maybe you would like to give it so all of us could enjoy it, would be appreciated. You just leave a little sticky note on the book. And if you leave it at the desk, Amy will see that I get it and we can put it in our um, collection. But it's been a lot of fun to work with it. And then we have some really interesting reads. So thank you. Okay. Thanks, Terry. And if any of you have not just a favorite book, but you've authored a book, we'd love to have a signed copy to put on display for all of our members to enjoy and, and uh, see your scholarship in a different way. So that takes us to the conclusion of our event today, but we want to open it up to any questions. So what you just witnessed and sat through was a 90-minute presentation, very similar to this style that you'll come and experience a, a HASS class right in this classroom. Uh, so any questions about any of the subjects that we talked about today, about your participation, any of the committees, or any general questions about HASS that you want to get addressed today while you're here? Yes, sir. Are there still any copies of the annual review available? Yes. Yes. Mark asked if there were copies of the annual review. We have them out in the lobby. We'll make sure to get you one and send, it, send you home with one. Or you can take the one from Ralph right there. We have more outside if you'd like, if you'd like one. <laughs> That's how HASP works. You ask for something and it comes to you right away. Well, as always, you can contact us anytime. Our phone number is on uh, the publications that you received in your welcome packet. If you didn't get one of those, please stop by and see us on your way out. We'll make sure you get one. Our phone number will always come to either Amy or I or the front desk worker. Our office is open nine to four, Monday through Thursday, right now in the summer. And we open up on select Fridays during the school year for some of our specialized courses. If you're really interested in films, we have a, a long running film series that runs on Friday mornings during the school year. So that's usually why we're open on half days on Friday. Fridays, uh, but otherwise, 9 to 4, Monday through Thursday, you can call us, you can email us, hasp at hope.edu. It's an easy email to remember, hasp at hope.edu. All your questions will either come to Amy or I, and we'll fawn them out where they need to go, to any of those special committee chairs or anyone else that could benefit from that information. Okay, thank you so much for joining us today. Grab some snacks and a drink on your way out, and we hope to see you in class in a few weeks. Take care.